are powers on Earth too hidden to be seen, and conspiracies too vast to comprehend. For years, the world has seen fact distorted, reality manipulated, and the truth concealed. Join the Pierre Sebac Podcast to uncover the real meanings behind ancient aliens and their symbolism. Hi, this is Pierre Sabak and today we're going to be talking about the Adamic man and the creation of the Adamic races. Um, now, in order for us to speak about the creation of the Adamic man, we first of all need to have a look at the principal players. And the principal players are as follows. So first of all, um, we've got the Cherubim. Now, the Cherubim are human angels and they form or they are compartmentalized or form a division between the seraphim which are non-human angels so within the occult tradition um, the occult tradition itself is split into two components which is the human component and the non-human component so we have the proto-humans which are um, the cherubim and they're from the pleiades we have the aborigine man now the aborigine man is indigenous to the earth um, so he's, he's a native hominid. Um, uh, we also have the seraphim, which I spoke of earlier, which is contrasted with the cherubim. Uh, the seraphim are from Sirius and they are non-human angels, um, equivalent to in today's parlance to an alien. And then lastly, we have the Adamic races, um, which is an Homo sapien. Now, the Adamic races um, were created by um, by creating, um, by combining, um, if you like, the DNA between the seraphim, the cherubim, and the aborigine man. And the Adamic man was created so that, um, so that Homo sapiens would be compatible genetically both with the seraphim angels and also with the cherubim. So the Adamic man is um, a conduit or is used in order to um, facilitate um, a grafted bloodline. And in holographic culture, I talk a lot about grafted bloodlines, stitched bloodlines, woven bloodlines. These are all ancient metaphors used in, in, in the um, early parlance in, in order to talk about these um, um, combined bloodlines, um, th these combined bloodlines which were often described as, as grafted or clones, etc. So we've got the combination then of the cherubim and the seraphim and the aborigine man, which forms the Adamic man, which in, in today's language is a homo sapien. And essentially, um, from what we can um, understand, there was a war in, in heaven. Um, this is famously recreated in the film The Clash of the Titans. Um, but this was a war between the, um, the demigods, um, the titans, and the Elohim or, or the angels and this linked into all different factions of the angels whether it be the seraphim whether it be the cherubim and so it, it essentially uh, what occurs is, is that there's a lot of destruction and as a result of uh, this conflict uh, mankind is, is destroyed or is nearly annihilated and then the seed of man is then recreated and, and this recreation or the planting of mankind um, is known as the second creation within um, well, w within the occult tradition, but it appears both within the Bible and it also appears within the within the Quran. This reference to the second creation. Now, the second creation itself is very distinct from the first creation because the first creation is the creation of the universe. The second creation is the planting of um, mankind. Now, it's quite interesting because many Gnostic commentators um, from the Nag Hammadi scriptures they actually argue that the Elohim are not um, responsible for the first creation or for the creation of the universe and that the Hel Elohim, that they are, um, that they are counterfeit and, and that they have placed themselves falsely um, above mankind so that mankind will be um, subjugated and so will worship the Elohim. 
So essentially we have this um, creation, if you like, of the political system and the planting of mankind on the earth. Now, um, so there is this recreation of mankind and the seed of humanity therefore is planted on the earth. And, and this is really referred to as the new human or the Adamic man. And this ties into what I said in, in terms of the second creation. Uh, it is it is necessary also to make a reference here to the fact that the proto-humans, which are the cherubim or, or the human angelic lineage, that they are different from the Aborigine man, and they're also very different from the um, Adamic man or the Homo sapien. But the Homo sapien itself, he, he consists, constitutes a species uh, which is sexually compatible with both the seraphim and the cherubim so he is really this conduit species um, which is compatible with both um, both the non-human angels and the human angels so this adamic man then can be understood as a new type of being and he is a model man or a homo sapien and he's used that he is used uh, in order to create um, what would then become the grafted bloodlines uh, the grafted bloodlines are the human angelic bloodlines um, so therefore um, and they were instituted to rule over the earth and we find this etymological connection between malak an angel and melek a king and so as we said before um, we, we can see then that these grafted bloodlines, that they're engineered from the Adamic man, that they're mixed with the seraphim. And, and this, therefore, in, in symbolism, is represented as a seraphic human. Uh, typically, um, it links into symbolism of the Demiurge, which we will get on later in this series. Um, but the Demiurge is a builder or a, or a genetic engineer. Uh, this genetic engineer um, created humanity. Now, the grafted bloodlines can be considered to be a hybrid, and they're also known as the Nephilim. Now, the Nephilim are uh, n non legitimate bloodlines. So, we have the Bene Chelohim, um, they are the sons of the gods, and they create um, this, um, they have relations with um, mortals um, and, and create this bloodline, which are the Nephilim. Um, but the non-sanctioned bloodlines are the Nephilim, and these tie into the symbolism of the fallen angel. Hence, within the early Greek, um, Satan is sometimes um, transliterated as Tatan, and Tatan would be another reference to the Titans. The Titans are the giants. Other names for the giants would be the Nephilim, um, Anaki, from the sons of Anak, uh, which would be Anak a giant. Um, we also have... Um, the gibberim, again another word for giant, gibbar is Orion. So we know that this progeny is from heaven, but specifically from Orion. And Orion is an important star constellation because this um, figures into the covenant of worlds, something which we'll talk about also later in this series. Um, and we see then that these uh, royal bloodlines, that they serve as intercessors between heaven and earth or between the Adamic man, which is uh, the Homo sapiens and the Elohim races. Um, and, and, and this ties into the covenant of worlds and, and the ship of state. So the ship of state is an extension of the angelic host. The angelic host are represented as angelic sailors. And this is very much a, a very secret teaching and it's formulated upon complex etymological and astrotheological symbolism, something which we will deal um, within this series. Um, so thank you for listening. And this is Pierre Sabak. Let's make a better world. Thank you very much.